Yes. And I just muted you. All righty. So officially welcome in to everybody. This is our flex and stretch class. Um, so we're going to be going in between a little bit of yoga and some non-traditional yoga movements. But let's go ahead and come onto our backs to get started. If there's anything touching you, feel free to move it out of the way. But let's go ahead and allow the eyes to close if they aren't already. And then starting to tune in to what's happening in the space around you. So what sounds, what smells can you identify? Hmm. Noticing how the temperature of the space feels against your skin. And then just noticing the back side of your body, all those points that are in contact with the mat from the back of the head to the back of the heels. And then beginning to tune into the body as a whole, scanning to notice what do we feel in our bodies? What's going on in the muscles and the joints? Noticing what you're feeling in your belly and in your head, just really exploring your body. And from the body, we begin to notice the breath without changing it, just acknowledging how fast or slow each breath is flowing. Deep or shallow, we're taking each inhalation. And then starting to notice how we're feeling mentally and emotionally in this moment. What are you carrying? from your day, from the week, from these past four months onto your mat. And just taking a moment to remind ourselves this is the first week of the second half of the year. So whatever goals you may have set for yourself at the beginning of the year, if this class in any way, shape, or form can, uh, can help you achieve that goal, then just kind of notice that relationship, how what you're doing in this moment can help us to reach whatever goals you set for yourself. And then slowly we take a nice deep inhalation, filling up the lungs, holding it in for three, two, one, and exhale, sighing it out of the mouth as we bring movement back into our fingers and toes, circling through the wrist and the ankles. And let's reach the arms and legs nice and long for a big stretch. Exhaling the knees into the chest, giving them a little hug. Gently rocking from side to side. Hmm. All right, and then let's place the soles of the feet down into the ground. Yeah, so like we're about to come into a bridge pose, but we aren't actually going there yet. So bring the fingertips behind the ears. We'll start to lift our head, lift our shoulders up, taking a little crunch. Yeah, feel those abs engaged, feel your back pressing down into the mat. And then lower back down. And we're going to do that twice more. So lift the hand, lift your shoulders, finding a crunch, engaging in your abs. Exhaling down. Good. Last time, go ahead and lift the head and shoulders, holding here. Now keep it lifted as we reach the arms down by our sides. Good. This engagement in your belly, I'm going to call this our hollow body shape. So to start to bring the right knee into the chest, left leg out nice and long. You gotta keep in that back pressing down into the mat. And then we switch knees, left knee in, right leg out nice and long. 
Yeah, and continue switching just like that, slow and control. This is all about maintaining that engagement in our bellies. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. All right. Go ahead and bring those feet down onto the ground. And from here, we're gonna extend that left leg all the way up to the sky. So let's point the shoulder up to the sky. And then lower the foot down, switching legs. Right leg extends up and switch. Okay, continue switching just like that. Noticing if we can gain a little bit of flexibility on those hamstrings. And if the leg didn't straighten all the way, that's okay. Just notice what's happening in your body. Last three, two, one and time. All right, let's come back into that knee hug. So left knee into the chest, right leg out long. We're gonna combine the two movements that we just took. So from here, go ahead and interlace your fingers behind the thighs. We lift the left leg straight into the sky. Yeah, and then the right knee comes in, left leg out long, and again, straighten the right leg. Yeah, so we can keep switching like that. Left knee in and straighten and switch. You feel free to keep grabbing onto the back of the thigh, or if you want a little bit more, reach the arms down by your side. Just take a little static nerve stretch. Holding here for five, four, three, two, one, and bring those knees in, gently rocking from side to side. Okay, from here, we come all the way up to sit. This is one of my favorites recently as part of um, the handstand program that I've been doing. So, um, there we go. Let's go ahead and with the legs straight <clears throat> and the heels are together, feel free to bring your hands to the outsides of the knees or if you prefer, reach those arms up to the sky. But we're gonna do leg lifts. So starting with the right leg, we're going to lift it up for 10, 9, 8, up and down, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, other leg, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and down. Hands come right next to our hips. Yeah, feet are flat on the ground as we lift those hips up to the sky for an inverted tabletop. And then back down onto the mat. All right. One more similar, but this time take your feet as wide as your mat. Again, point those toes, either hands in between the legs or up overhead. Starting with our left leg for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, right leg, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and done. Awesome. Let's go ahead and come on to all fours, finding our tabletop. <clears throat> all right, this first movement is what we call wrist push ups. So what those are, bring those hands flat onto the ground, fingers are spread nice and wide. Keep those knuckles um, where the fingers be the palms on the ground, but lift the palms up and down. Trying our best to keep those shoulders stacked over the wrists. All right, you can keep going just like that, or if you feel like you have a little bit more, you can walk those knees back a little bit more, make it a little bit more challenging, but we got 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. All right, finding that tabletop again. If you spread it out, go ahead and narrow it once again as we take cat and cow poses. So we inhale, drop the belly, lift the chest, and look full. Exhale, hollowing out the belly, rounding the chin in. Go ahead and take three more rounds on your own, following the pace of your breath.
And after your last cow thumb cat pose, go ahead and find a neutral spine. From here, we'll extend the right leg straight out to the side. Yeah. For those of you who have been taking it, um, I actually finally figured out that it doesn't mirror me, so we'll fix that. All right, so from here, left hand comes to the ground on the outside of the left knee. Go ahead and reach that right arm nice and long, bring the shoulder by the ear. Press those hips forward slightly for a little back bend. And then switching, right hand comes to the left, um, right leg. Sweep the left arm over. Let's do that one more time, all the way over to the left. And all the way to the right. Once your hands come back down to the mat, we'll switch legs. Right knee and left leg out long. All right. And right hand to the outside of that knee. Go ahead and reach the left arm, shoulder by the ear. Nice deep inhale. On our exhale, coming through center all the way to the left. Inhale, lift. Exhaling, switch. Inhale, lifting the left, row, left arm. And all the way over to the other side. All right, let's bring those hands down to the mat once again. Slide those knees in as we find our plank pose. All right, we're going to play with our plank a little bit. So from here, make sure all the knuckles in the hands are down. Spread those shoulder blades wide, trying to round the upper back. We're going to lift the right toes up and then switch left toes up. Yeah, so a little plank leg lift. But as we do these, try your best not to drop your hips down, causing compression in our back. We just squeeze in those glutes for five, four, three, two, one, and downward facing dog. All right, feel free to spread your feet wider if that feels good for you. But for the next eight breaths, take whatever movements your body needs here. I know one of the common questions about downward dog is, where is my head? Some teachers teach it, tuck, it, uh, tuck the chin into your chest, looking at your toes. Some teachers say, put your head between your shoulders. I say, do the one that feels best in your body. All right. And from our downward dog, let's start to walk our hands back towards our feet, coming to the back of our mat in a forward fold. And then with a nice deep in the knees, we'll roll up one vertebrae at a time, and then all the way up to stand. From here, we inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Exhaling, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, bring those hands to the mat, walking all the way out to our plank. Pausing at our plank for three, two, one, lower all the way down onto our bellies. Top of the feet on the mat. Inhale, lifting our chest into cobra. Exhaling, downward facing dog. From our downward dog, we bend the knees, look between the hands, and then step or hop the feet to the front of your mat. Inhaling, halfway lift once you rock. And exhaling, forward fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way to the sky. And exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift, flat back. And hands come to the mat, stepping those feet back into our plank, pausing here. On your inhale, shift those shoulders forward up the wrist as we lower the knees down. Lower halfway down, hug those elbows in and pause for three, two, one, all the way down to the mat. This time, the arms come back by our sides, finding our locust pose. As we inhale, lift the chest, lift those legs, hugging the ankles together, and exhaling down. Twice more. Inhale, lift and reach. Exhaling down. Last time, inhaling up. Exhale down. Go ahead and bring those hands by the ribs, tuck your toes under. And we're going to come all the way up to your plank and then finding our downward dog. From down dog, bending the knees, look between the hands, exhale, step or hop forward. Inhaling, halfway lift, flat back. 
Exhaling, forward fold. Inhale, release those arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, release the arms. All right, adding on slightly, we inhale, release the arms up to the sky. And then bring them behind your back, interlace the fingers. On our inhale, open the chest, looking up at the sky. Now keep those hands bound as we fold forward, let the arms float over the shoulders. If that's too much, you can let your arms rest on your back. But let the hand hang. Take as much of a bend in the knee as feels good in your body. And now with a much deeper bend into the knees, go ahead and release the arms, reach them up into our chair pose. In our chair, make sure we're squeezing those glutes, trying to tuck our tailbone under, keep that belly nice and firm. One more breath. And exhale, forward fold. Inhaling halfway, lift flat back. Exhaling, hands to the mat, step or hop the feet back. Lowering through your chaturanga. Inhaling into our cobra or upward facing dog. And meeting in downward dog. From down dog, we float the right leg up to the sky and step it forward between the hands, finding our warrior one. So back heel down on the ground, hips forward, shoulders forward, reach the arms up to the sky. All right, now keep the lower body as it is, but we'll bring the hands to the small of our, of our back. So place the back of one hand up to the palm of the other. Go ahead and reach the arms all the way to the sky once again, but this time bend the elbows, hands to the small of the back. And inhale, reaching up. Last time, exhale, bend the elbows, hands to the small of the back. Inhale, we reach the arms to the sky. Exhaling, hands down to the mat. As we step back into your plank, you can take the chaturanga or go straight into your downward facing dog, whatever feels good for you. And then from our downward dog, we'll float the left leg up to the sky. Exhale, stepping in between the hands, warrior one, back heel down, square the hips forward. Keep that back leg nice and straight, squeezing that right glute. Same arm variation as before, bend the elbows, hands to the small of the back. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, bend and rotate. Last time, up and back and down. We reach the arms up to the sky and exhaling hands down to the mat. Stepping back into your plank, finding your chaturanga and your back bend, meeting in our downward facing dog. From downward dog, we inhale, bend the knees, look between the hands, exhale, step or hop forward. Inhaling halfway lift, exhaling forward fold. Sitting the hips down into our chair, we reach the arms forward and up. And coming all the way up to stand, bring the hands to the small of the back, and relax those fingers. Inhale, lift the chest to the sky. Keep the hands bound as we fold forward. Yeah, start to sit the hips down and back, reach those arms forward and up into our chair pose. On your next exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhaling, hands to the mat, step or hop the feet back. Find your chaturanga and your back bend, meeting in our down dog. Next inhale, I'm sorry. On your next inhale, go ahead and reach the right leg to the sky. Exhale, step it forward between those hands, finding a high lunge. Good, so stay on the back heel, like stay on the back toes. Arms are up just like our warrior one. Holding. Yeah, keep trying to square those hips even here. One more breath. Exhale the hands down to the mat. Pause though. We're going to find a side plank on that left hand. So we'll rotate to the outer edge of the left foot. You can place that right foot wherever feels best in your side plank. 
but lift those hips up for three, two, one, finding our plank, option for your chaturanga and back bend, and we all meet in downward dog. All right, other side, inhaling the left leg to the sky. And exhale, stepping in between the hands, high lunge. Yeah. And our goal here is to knit those ribs together, find that same core engagement that we found when we were on our back. And tuck the tailbone under, trying to lift the front of your hip bones, taking one more breath here. Exhaling, hands down to the mat. Finding our side plank on the right arm. So roll to the outer edge of that right foot. Place the left leg where you like. One more breath. Finding our plank pose. Taking your chaturanga. Inhaling through our back bend. Exhaling downward dog. We'll be in our down dog for six breaths. So if you'd like to take a child's pose and stand, you're more than welcome. Whichever one you're in, deep inhalations and long exhales. All righty. If you're in child's pose, let's find our downward dog once again. Right. So go ahead and bring your knees down to the mat if you have them. Check out the monitor. I'll check out your monitor for a second. This first movement is a, called a plank stretch. So from a plank, I'm going to lift my hips up, taking my hand to opposite leg. So if my right hand reaches for my left leg, I'm then going to take my left knee to my right arm. And then I switch sides, left arm to right leg, right knee to left arm. All right, so let's find our plank pose. We're going to do that for about 30 seconds. Ready? And begin. Lifting up, reach cross body. Cross body, knee to elbow. Now, if this is too much to balance on one hand, you're more than welcome to keep both hands on the ground. Maybe we gesture forward and back from our down dog to our plank. Or maybe we take knee to elbow, make this work for you. Almost there, 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Taking a nice deep inhale from our downward dog. Bend the knees, look between your hands, and make your way forward. Inhaling halfway left. Exhale, forward fold. Sitting down into our chair, we lift the arms up to the sky. As we stand up tall, start to lift that right knee up in front of us. And step it way back, finding a high lunge. Shimmy, slide, shake that foot wherever you need to. That's, yeah. All right, from here, no. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Right foot forward, left foot back. I know I just threw everybody off right there. All right, with those arms up nice and tall, we take a nice deep inhale. And on an exhale, open our twist to the right. Twice more like that, inhaling up. Exhale to the right. Last time, up, and twist. As we reach those arms straight up to the sky, pausing here, we're going to reach the right arm out to the side, making a nice big L with our arms. Take a deep inhale, and as we exhale, lift your left knee up, squish the arms, and step back. We're here for 30 seconds. So make these as slow and controlled or as quick as you need, but for each one, Pausing to find that balance. Yeah, halfway there. Yeah. There we go. Keep that belly nice and firm. Engaging it as though somebody's about to come and poke you vigorously in the belly. Three, two, one. Let's reach those arms all the way to the sky. Hands come down to the inside of the right foot now. All right. Either step or hop to switch, and our left foot is forward, reaching those arms straight up to the sky. Yeah. 
Just as before, glide that left hip back, firm up your glutes. Three times we twist to the left, so nice deep inhale, and then exhale, we twist. Inhaling up, exhale, twist. The last time, up, and twist. Arms reach up to the sky. The left arm reaches out to the side for our L. And then begin, nice big lift, and back. Combining our balance with a little core strength. Work on that muscular endurance, especially in those shoulders. I know you can probably feel them, or at least I can. 10 seconds left. Five, three, two, one, and time. Go ahead and bring those hands down to the ground. Step or hop to switch legs again. Bring the right foot forward into our lunge. Once the right foot's forward, reach those arms all the way up to the sky. And then from here, right arm to the side. Go ahead and lift that left knee up, pause. And then hands can come to the hips or at the chest, starting into our single leg deadlift. Hinge at the waist, bending into that right knee. And lift. Yeah, keep going just like that. If that's not working for you, you can gently set those toes behind you. But we still hinge and lift. 10 seconds left. Five, three, two, one, and time. Let's bring those feet down onto the ground, hips to distance apart, nice and deep into a squat. Now let's open those arms wide and then lift up a little bit higher in the hips. That way we remain engaged, nice open chest. And then on our exhale, lift the hips up into our forward fold. We're gonna transition between those two. So inhale down into our squat. Exhale, forward fold. Two more times, inhale down. Exhale up. Last time, down, and up. All right, stepping. Yeah, stepping the right foot back, there we go. Let's find our lunge once again. All right, from our lunge. Uh, yeah, there we go, from our lunge, reach the left arm out to the side to our elbow. Lift the knee up, and then our hands can come onto the hips if you like. Start to hinge forward for our single leg deadlift. Yeah, this entire time we keep our ribs knitted together. Nice. I should have said it last time, Lacey. Um, switch arms if you're going to reach for your toes. Reaching cross body it should help with the balance. Last five, three, two, one, and release the foot down. Let's sit down into our squat. All right, 20 seconds, shifting back and forth between our squat and our forward fold, moving at your own pace. So if one of these feels really good, you're more than welcome to take a couple breaths there. Ten seconds left. And that is time. All right, we're gonna play with the crow pose. <clears throat> we got a couple minutes allotted for it. So if you have a strong crow, you're all more than welcome to just go ahead and hop right into it. Um, otherwise, I'll walk you through our crow. So our hands are shoulder width apart. I will start by bringing the knees to the outsides of the elbows. And then once you're there, lift your butt up, let your chest be parallel to the ground. And if you want to stay here, then we just play with kicking one heel towards your butt and then the other. If at some point you want to come up completely, lift one heel and then the other. Yeah. And even just 
bringing the weight onto the hands. If both feet are on the ground, we're still building strength there. Just keep hugging those elbows in towards one another. All right, we've got about 30 more seconds to play. And I really do like to approach it as though we're playing. That kind of gets rid of some of that frustration or at least a little bit of stuff without the frustration. Just explore. All right, when you are done with that, let's let it go coming all the way up to stand. Getting ready for our second flow here. And from the top of our mats. Oh yeah, water, that's a thing. <laughs> Feel free to grab water. I am always the worst about reminding people of that, so forgive me. All right. And then once you're ready from the front of your mat, we'll inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Exhaling forward, fold. Inhaling halfway lift. Exhaling hands to the mat, step or hop the feet back. Lowering through Chaturanga, finding your rat bend, and meeting in our downward dog. From downward dog, we'll float the right leg up to the sky. And step it forward between the hands, making your way to warrior two. So back heel down, let those left toes point to the side, right toes full, and keep pressing that right knee open, firm glutes. On our next inhale, straighten the front leg, reach both arms to the sky. And exhaling warrior two. One more time like that, inhaling lift. And then a little bit deeper into our warrior two. Keep the lower body as it is as we flip the right palm to the sky. Inhale, reverse warrior, you're reaching up and back. Exhaling into our side angle pose. Left arm by the ear, right arm on the thigh. Let's flow through those two twice more. Inhale, reaching up and back, reverse warrior. Exhale, side angle. Last time, inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. As we find our warrior two, start to straighten that front leg. Shift the hips back, reach the arms forward. As we find triangle, left arm to the sky, right arm on the shin. And that knuckle underneath the big toe on both feet, firmly press it down into the ground. Firming up our muscle, leg muscles, as well as our core for one more breath. And then we start to look down at the mat, bend into the front knee, finding our half moon pose, lifting up that left leg. Yeah, you can modify this as much as you want. Maybe that left hand is on the hip. Or maybe we try to float the bottom arm. Explore as you wish for two more breaths. And then as you're ready, we gently step back into our warrior two. Nice deep inhale here. And exhale, windmill the hands down to the mat. We're going to take that right leg all the way up and back into our three legged down dog. On your exhale, bring the knee to your left elbow. Inhale, reach it up and back. Bend the knee, stack the hip on top of the other. So if you look under your left armpit, we should be able to see our toes hanging out. Let's do that again. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, knee to left elbow. Inhale, reach it up and back. Bend the knee, open the hip. Last time, straighten the back. This time, knee to elbow, maybe kick the foot out to the side. Yeah, straight out to the left. Maybe even floating those left fingertips up to the sky for a fallen triangle. And lift those hips up. And with control, the hands come down to the mat. Reach the leg up and back. Bend the knees, stack the hips. And if you like to find your down on your wild thing, let the toes touch the ground. Open the hips to the sky. Maybe even reach your fingertips forward. Just as much control, the hand comes back to the mat, finding our plank pose as we lower through Chaturanga. Inhaling into our back bend. Meeting in downward dog, holding here for five breaths. 
Child's pose is always an option. All right, from our downward dog, we'll float the left leg up to the sky and step it forward between the hands, finding our warrior two. I never realized how annoyingly bright these pants are in the camera until just now. On your inhale, straighten the front leg, reach both arms to the sky. Exhale down. One more time, up and even deeper. Keep pressing that left knee wide, but we'll flip the left palm, reach up and back, reverse forward. Exhaling into our side angle pose. Twice more, inhaling, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Last time, reverse. And side angle. Finding our warrior two, as we start to straighten the front leg, hip shift back, arm reaches forward, triangle pose. We talked about the feet, we talked about the engagement of the legs. Now lean your shoulders back ever so slightly, but counter that by bracing your belly even more. And we slowly start to turn our head towards the mat. Reach that left hand forward as we begin to straighten the legs, lifting up the back leg for our half moon pose. <laughs> Yeah, the more engagement that we find in that top leg, the lighter it feels. Once again, you can play with any variations. But notice if your toes are starting to creep off at an angle. One more breath here. And then gently stepping back into our warrior two. Nice deep inhalation here. Exhale, windmill the hands down to the mat. All right, we're gonna extend that left leg all the way up and back into our three leg down dog. And on your exhale, knee to right elbow. <sighs> Inhaling up, bend the knees, stack the hips. Inhale, straighten it. Exhale, knee to right elbow. <sighs> Inhale, up and back, bend the knees, stack the hips, tail of the dog. All right, last time, reach it back. Bring the knee to the right elbow, extend that foot straight out to the side. So the closer to your hands, uh, to the front of your mat, the more challenging. The further back, the more accessible. Yeah, go ahead and lift that right arm up, lift those hips up. And then bring the hand back down, extend the leg up and back. Bend the knee, stack the hip. Feel free to stay right here or flip your dog, toes to the ground, hips to the sky. And then come back into a plank pose, lowering through Chaturanga. Inhaling into our back bend. Exhaling, downward dog. From down dog, we bend the knees, look between the hands, exhale, step or hop forward. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way to the sky. Exhaling, hands through the heart, and release. All right, we will take 45 seconds, do whatever you need to, and we'll move into our next circuit. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and start to widen our feet. We're going to sit those hips down into a goddess guano or four stands. So the, tail, the toes only turn out as far as our knees can press wide. And then we sit a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper, even deeper. All right, from here, if you like, we can reach those arms straight out to the side. We're going to come up to a kick. So straighten and lift the right leg down into our squat and left. 
Yeah. Moving at your own pace. Do what feels good with your arms. Yeah. But as we lift that leg, try to keep your chest nice and tall. Good, everybody. Eight seconds left. Last three, two, one, and time. All right, narrowing our stance now. We're going to find a chair pose. So start to sit the hips down and back. You can have your hands wherever you want. Hips, chest, arms, overhead, whatever. All right. But from here, we're going to extend the right leg, the right leg straight out to the side, and then back. All right, let's do that all together. Now, by keeping the bend in that left knee, we got to squeeze those glutes. I know you probably feel those quads burning by now. That's a good thing. That's what we want. All right, eight seconds left. And then we're going to do the other side. Three, two, one, other side. Out and back. Keep that belly firm again. Again, it's not just trying to suck it in. It's trying to firm up all the way around like you're creating your own little band of armor in your torso. Five, three, two, one, and time. Go ahead and shake that out. I want to come down to all fours, but do so at the very back of your mat, like as far back as you can go. We're taking bear crawls. So with those toes tucked under, go ahead and lift the knees about an inch off the ground. And from here, little baby steps to the front of your mat. Once you reach the front of your mat, just go backwards. Yeah, so instead of turning around, we just reverse the movement. Yeah, take that one more time, forward and back. We've got about 12 seconds left. Last five, three, two, one, and time. Coming all the way down onto our bellies. Let's reach the arms out long in front of us. Tops of the feet are on the ground. The feet are going to stay down, so try your best not to lift the feet up. But let's go ahead and lift our chest, reach the arms out long, and begin to pull the elbows back into the little cactus arms and reach forward, thumbs to the sky. Yeah, so pull back, palms face the ground, reaching forward, palms face each other. Continuing just like that. Yeah, keeping that chin tucked in, looking straight down at the ground. Nice. Every time you pull those elbows back, can you lift the chest a little bit higher? For five, four, three, two, one, and time. All right, we're rolling on to our backs now. All right, once you're on your back, we're taking flutter kicks. So you got the option, maybe tuck those arms underneath your butt, palms on the ground. Or if you prefer the arms, keep it by your side, go ahead and straighten both legs. And we'll begin little kicks. As much as you can, press your back down into the ground. What do you want, Shadow? All right, we're going to make these bigger into scissor kicks, so nice wide legs now. Yeah. Can we still keep that back down, though? Last five, four, three, two, one, and time. Rocking up to seated. For this next movement, our hands are right under our shoulders, fingers are pointing outwards. You can do forward or back if you want to, but this is the most comfortable on my wrist, personally. And then we straighten the arms, lift the hips up slightly off the ground. And start to kick one leg out and then the other. Optioning whether you want to point them or flex them back towards your face. Now adding on, may we start to reach arm to opposite leg. If you do, just make sure that whichever hand is on the ground, 
as many knuckles of pressing down into the ground as you can. And nice, everybody. 10 seconds left. Five, three, two, one, and done. Coming to all fours now. All right. This is one that we've done before, but it's called a uh, side kick. So from that tabletop with my knees lifted, I'm gonna rotate my hips. So think about the right leg kicking to the left and then my left leg kicking to the right. All right, let's try that out. There we go. It's just the hips moving side to side. So kick one leg over and then the other leg. You don't even have to worry about touching it if it doesn't make sense in your body, but it really is your hips moving side to side like a little rainbow. Awesome, five, four, three, two, one and time. Let's make our way all the way to stand so that we can do it again. Yay! I know everybody's on mute, but I heard all the excitement. All right, this is our last one, and then we'll start our stretch sequence right after this. Wide legs, toes out. Go ahead and sit down nice and deep and begin. Lateral kick and squat. There we go. Even if that leg comes an inch off the ground, if that's where we are and still able to stand up tall, then that's where we are. Three, two, one, and time. All right. Hands come onto the hips or in front of your chest. Go ahead and sit down deep into a chair, starting with our right leg to the side and back. Yeah. This time I'm going to take it a little bit faster now. Yeah. There you go, moving as quickly as you can maintain balance. Get ready to switch legs in three, two, one, other leg. There we go, firm belly, firm thighs, firm glutes. Five, three, two, one, and time. Coming to the back of our mat, getting ready for our bear crawl, coming to all fours. We're going to take 30 seconds, however many you can go forward and back on, but let's begin. Really focusing on that full contact of the hands into the mat with each step. Trying our best not to let our butts creep up to the sky. Keep those knees down. And by keeping it nice and low and keep this compact posture, we can find more in your engagement. Five, four, three, two, one, and down onto the belly we go. All right, tops of the feet are on the mat. Reach the arms out long in front of us. Go ahead and turn those thumbs up to the sky, and then begin. Pull the elbows back and forward. Each time we pull, we lift the chest higher. Trying our best to remember to keep the chin tucked in, looking straight down at the ground. Almost there. Last five. Three, two, one. Coming on to the back. Getting ready for flutter kicks and scissor kicks. So again, you tuck the arms under, reach them down by your side, whichever you want. Let's begin. Little flutters. If your arms aren't under your back, how much can you still press the back down? I know it's a little bit harder this way. We're gonna do our scissor kicks in three, two, one, nice wide kicks. These are generally a little bit easier to keep the belly down, but a little bit harder on the legs. So we got a little trade off here. Last five, four, three, two, one and time, rocking up the center. Hands underneath the shoulders, get ready for our crab pose. Go ahead and lift those hips up, straighten the arms, and begin either kicking or kicking and touching the leg. You don't have to touch the toes, maybe you're touching your knee. 
go where your body says it can go comfortably and still feel like you're challenging yourself. I know that's a hard place to find. Like, what do you mean be comfortable and challenge myself? Maybe I'll say getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. How about that one? Last five, four, three, two, one, and time. Making our way towards our tabletop. All right, these are our side kick throughs. Last one before we start stretching. Lift those knees up a little off the ground and begin twisting to one side. Make we tap foot to head and the other side. If you can go a little bit faster, you're more than welcome to and highly encouraged to. If it's still clicking in your mind, don't worry about faster. And just feel those hips, make that nice big shift from side to side, like a little um, rainbow is what we said earlier. Eight seconds left. Three, two, one, and time. Awesome, everybody. Let's find a child's pose. Sit those hips back and down. Once we're in our child's most deep inhalation and long exhalations, every breath. Three more breaths in our child's pose. Now keep the body as it is, but we'll start to bring the uh, bend into the elbows, bring the palms together. And we're gonna let the thumbs touch the back of the neck, finding a stretch in those triceps on the back of the upper arm. And keep letting the chest sink down. Last two breaths. And as we straighten the arms back out, let's momentarily make our way into downward dog. Making a, uh, finding a pigeon pose. We're gonna slide the right knee forward. The left leg is just extended back. If you need to, go ahead and look back to make sure the leg isn't signaling one way or the other. Trying to keep those hips square and lowering down to where it feels best in your body. So you can stay on the hands, the forearms, or the belly. But we maintain those deep breaths. Looking for any points in our bodies that we can let go of tension, maybe the jaw, the face, the hands. Two more breaths in our pigeon. We start to make our way back up onto the hands. And then sit onto that right hip as we swing the left leg out long in front of us. So the right foot is going to be in the inner left thigh. Go ahead and square your chest towards those left toes. Inhale tall. And as we exhale, we fold over that left leg. So this is one of my favorite stretches towards the end of this class. And it has been since I've been doing this class for a couple of reasons. One, yeah, we get to stretch on our hamstrings, but there's a little muscle called the QL or nicknamed the QL that is a cause of a lot of back pains and, and uh, tightness. So we're just stretching that out for two more breaths. And then we start to find our flat back, making our way all the way up. Crossing the right foot over the left thigh. You can stay here with this straight uh, left leg or bend into the knee, bring the heel by the hip. Right hand reaches back, left arm to the outside of the knee, twisting over to the walk uh, to the right. But every inhale, sit up tall. Every exhale, twisting a little bit further. Last two breaths. Uh, 
And on our next inhale, bring the hands all the way over to the left side and then bow gently forward for a counter posture. As we come back up, we'll uncross the legs. However you need to, we're gonna find our pigeon on the left leg. So if you wanna come into it from our down dog or if you can shift into it from there. There we go, square those hips once again. And then find that place that feels best in your body. It's that perfect little balance point between overexerting and our, our brains are just firing, saying, ow, ow, I don't want to be here. We want to always find that place that's close to the limit, but never trying to actually find it or exceed it. And over time, our bodies will respond by gently loosening. Last two breaths here. And then walking those hands back in. We'll sit onto the left hip, swinging the right leg out long in front of us. Right, find our Janu Shishasana on this side. Square the uh, chest towards the right toes. And on your exhale, folding over with that nice long spine. Even compared to the other side, how does this one differ? Is it the back, the back of that right leg or the left hip? One more breath here. With the flat back, we come all the way back upright, crossing that left foot over the right leg. And again, if you like, you can bend it to this um, right knee, but if you do, that hip has to come back down to the ground. Left hand behind us, right arm to the outside of the knee. Again, sitting up as tall as you can, lifting up and out of the hips. Last two breaths. On our inhale, the hands come over to the right side, leading gently forward. As we come back in, all right, uncross the legs. We're going to end with the kneeling position. So to start, let's tuck our toes under and sit back on the heels. This is the one that everyone hates the most, usually. All right, once you're there, we can rest the hands on our thighs, sitting up tall and allowing the eyes to close. This is where we're gonna take our four rounds of box breathing. So that's inhaling for four, holding it in for four, exhale for it, holding it out. I'll guide you through it. But go ahead and take a nice deep inhalation. And side out of the mouth. And we begin inhaling one, two, three, Hold it in, four, three, two, exhale, four, three, two, hold it out, four, three, two. Second time, inhale, one, two, three, hold it in, four, three, two, exhale, four, three, two, hold it out, four, three, two. Halfway, inhale, one, two, three, hold it in, four, three, two, exhale, four, three, two, hold it out, four, three, two. Last time, inhale, one, two, three, hold it in, four, three, two, Exhale, four, three, two, hold it out, four, three, two, one. Nice deep inhale and sigh out of the mouth. Go ahead and sit onto the tops of the feet, 
Oh, yeah. All right. And once you're there, we inhale, reach the arms all the way to the sky. Exhaling hands to the center of the chest. Thank you all so very much for coming in, sharing your time, and your patience, and energy. Have a great rest of your night. I'll see you all next time. Namaste. Oh, quick reminder, uh, if anyone's interested, starting this week, we're going to be doing the Thursday class out at Northridge Park. Um, there's tons of space out there. We're still going to record it and whatnot, but it just kind of gives people an opportunity to go out in the park and do this class if you like. So, yeah, if you can, awesome. If not, no worries. Cool. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.